Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos. Okay, in the mid 90s, singer songwriter Jill Sobule achieved mainstream, mainstream success with hits like Supermodel and of course I Kissed a Girl. And since in the decades since, she has been making important songs that tackle important issues. And, you know, flash forward to now, she's putting it all out there in an autobiographical rock concert musical called Fuck the Seventh Grade which is happening in New York City through November 19th at the Wild Project. How are you, Jill? I'm doing really good. I'm, I'm, I'm other than you, I'm, I understand divas now, now that I'm a thespian. <laughs> my, my voice is a little funky, so I'm, I have, after I talk to you, I'm, 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 I'm gonna be like Garbo in Grand Hotel. Do it, I love that. I mean, listen, seventh grade, when I, when I heard, I was like, Okay, seventh grade for me, I was pretending that I wanted to make out with girls. I was dressing in pretend like skater boy outfits. I was very much like in that mode of not knowing who I was. But this show, people are loving it. I lo The New York Times had a great review about it. We're in our last week, so we really want to make sure that people see it. I think queer people are definitely going to connect with it. But set it up for us because why seventh grade? What was it about seventh grade for you that was such a pivotal time? Well, I, I think it's interesting because it's kind of universal. It's either seventh or eighth grade. I mean, yeah. I think it's, it's you know, our peers become more important. Hormonally, we're changing and girls are kind of like our bodies are, are uh, have grown more than our brains a little bit. And um, it's just, and kids are fucking mean. Mine takes place in the late 70s, and that was not, it, you know, them, them youngins have to know it was not the ideal time, you know, yeah. the, you, there was no, you could not, there was no, there was no gay clubs, there was no uh, gay straight alliances in, in uh, schools, so it's, it's, seventh grade which normally is just miserable for everyone and growing up queer so yeah uh, and i always say at the end freud said like the worst time of our development is the uh first week first month first year i don't really know what he meant but whatever he said it was wrong it's seventh grade seventh grade Seventh grade. Yeah, you're stuck seventh grade, and that's, that's the name of this grade. project, this show. I love it. What's it been like for you to, you know, because you've been on for a couple weeks and it's been extended, obviously, because people are really into it. What's it been like for you to see, you know, your fans that have been with you for a long time, but also a new group of people kind of come and experience this, you know, auto autobiographical story and kind of learn all, all about you? Well, it is autobiographical, but I mean, the other girls, they have parts too. Yeah. I mean, it's, you wanna, <clears throat> I mean, it, in a way it's my story, but it really is kind of universal and that's the way we wanted it to be. It was like not learn about me more so. This is something that hopefully people say, yeah, I get it. This happened to me. This is, and um, you know, so that, I want it to be where people aren't coming to see my life. It's they're coming to see their life too. And pretty, it's pretty universal. There's one part of the show I go, you know, how many people wanted to die when they were in seventh grade? And you, you know, the hands shoot up, you know? And, uh, and the other girls that the band who are amazing, they, uh, they get to tell a little bit of their stories too, so. Well, let's talk about that because it's it's this three piece band that are a part of the show, and I know I think it said that it was kind of like this was based on like this imagination that you had, or that you know, in your what was in your imagination when you were growing up. Tell me about how the the band works into this whole show because it's pretty cool. Well, the band starts, you know, when I was a little kid. Um, I mean, I was a fierce little girl, you know, before seventh grade. It's like. <clears throat> I wanted to be Jimi Hendrix. I was the guitar player, but back then, once I got to junior high, it wasn't like, 
it wasn't cool. It was like I was a weirdo instead, you know? And so there were no role models for me. I mean, not only were there no role models of, of, of queer people, gay people for me, but there were no role models for me of women rockers. There really wasn't back then. There was a couple, but there, there wasn't. So they start out as my imaginary band that I play, my, you know, I imagine in my garage growing up, but then they become my real band. So it's, it's pretty, pretty great. And they're pretty amazing. And we, we're fierce. That's right. And I love that. So I think, good. I feel like this show and like what the message that you're saying can be a little bit for the people that maybe weren't the cool kids in school but now are and like you know they can kind of be like you know see this story do you feel like that that's kind of the case well you know it's really funny because everyone comes up to me whether they're straight or gay and you they it's it feels like yeah you know everyone that everyone even the people that you thought were not the kind of geeks and the, the loners and the queers I mean, everyone had a shitty time. They just didn't tell everyone. Right. And that's the thing that's interesting, is it's just horrible, hands down for everyone, you know? And, and of course, with being growing up gay, like I said, I had no role models. And so that was, you had to keep these secrets to yourself, but everyone had secrets. And they, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I, thinking about, you know, the 90s, obviously, you know, you, Melissa Etheridge, who did you look up to and who were your, your peers that you connected with, you know, once you got a little bit older? Because like, you know, like you said, in the 70s when you were growing up, there was no one like Melissa Etheridge or you, you know what I mean? Well, I remember one thing that happened in the 70s is, oh, was it late 70s or early 80s was I was visiting my Aunt Mickey in London and there was this show, a, a rock musical, and I went to it and it was called, this was bef way before the movie, it was called the Rocky Horror Picture Show and uh, with Tim Curry and, and I remember going to it and thinking like, it, it blew my mind, like, oh, there's a place for me that I'll be able to go to sometime. You know, it might not be Transylvania, but <laughs> there's a place for weirdos. <clears throat> and there was also growing up, I mean, they weren't role models, but like when when rockers were kind of more androgynous, like mm -hmm. Bowie and, uh, and even people like Lou Reed and, and Mick Jagger were, were, you know, they would be kind of wearing makeup and in drag and that there was a little time there. But later, uh, in the the 90s there there were people who were had come out there were you know there mo mostly men earlier on there was the you know the soft cell and you know the the sylvesters and all the, the uh, sylvester love yeah, yeah it was great and then for women there started becoming uh you know there was melissa etheridge and and there was a few but it was Melissa, it was so funny, her, her album, when she put out the album, Yes I Am, which was, you know, her, you know. Confirming song. to the world, yes I am, yeah. Yes, I am, well, I wanted to get, that was before my album and I wanted to call my album, She Sure Is. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, I love that. And how fun for the two of you, although the shows are very different, but you're both in this kind of parallel Broadway, you know, show moment together. It's so great. Yeah, well, I think the thing is we're both storytellers. I mean, yeah. so in a way, this is just uh, not that far from some of my own shows where I just kind of riff between songs and tell stories. And also my songs have always been little stories. Yeah. So, um, so this doesn't seem that far off in a way, other than I had to, uh, 
you know, memorize the lines. That is not my bag. <laughs> I, it goes hard. Yeah, that's a whole that's a whole separate skill set. Um, what what are some, who are some of the artists? You know, it's such a different time. Like you know, but I love it's like. Ugh. 1995 was Supermodel, and, and obviously I Kissed a Girl when you all, when that kind of took you to that platform, that level. Who are some of the artists now, because it's such a different time, that you think are doing a good job that are, you know, queer or, you know, just being who they are and telling authentic stories? Well, I, I think that it it is a whole different, a whole different world. I mean, it, it, it's not, what a great time to be a queer artist. Right. What a what a great time. You can do whatever you want. And and when you have people like even where you know it in the the rap world, like from Frank Ocean to next I mean that is uh that's amazing. That that kind of it's like the the last frontiers are being. Are you still, you know, enjoying telling your stories through your songs and you know performing live? Because I know your fans are, are very dedicated. Oh yeah, I mean it's what I do. It's the only yeah. thing. I have no other skill sets. I'm <laughs> capable to do anything else. I mean any kind of other job I failed at. <laughs> so. I'm doomed to just keep doing this. And I love to tell stories. I love to write music. I mean, I, I have to, this, you know, I've been writing for other musicals and I have to decide which I like better. I mean, I like both of, of performing it or just writing. So I'm, I'm working on another uh, a, a queer adaptation of a Scarlet Letter, kind of a mm -hmm. YA, uh, uh, YA novelish kind of thing. It, it's it's really funny and really wait, so funny. is that going to be a book or a stage production? Uh, well, stage production. It's just love develop that. developing right now. That's so good. I love a, a YA moment because sometimes I'm like, the world is so intense. I need a little light, you know, good feeling stuff. That's good. Oh no, me too. I mean, I I went through a stage of of queer YA books. And some of them are so good. So good. I know. Well, I have just a couple. Think, yeah. what do you, just think if I had that when I was a kid, that would have been amazing. That's what it's all about. And that's why, you know, I'm glad we're, you know, it's so important that we support and make sure the world, um, you know, knows about that and tells the right stories about our community. And that's why with, with your show, we were like, we want to amplify and make sure that people you know, in New York and hopefully beyond, because I was thinking, you know, hopefully this, your show can maybe make its way to LA or can do a little traveling around, because I think it's an important message for a lot of people. So let's let's put that in, into the universe. Let's put it out. What well, you guys do such good work. And, and like I said, I wish there would have been a glad when I was was a kid. And thank God for, for you guys, for all the, the, the kids. Yeah, that. absolutely. And, um, yeah, I think maybe was it a Glad Award in the early two thousands? Was it? I won. Was it a Glad Award? And I walked the red carpet with Boy George in a. Oh, we'll find that photo. Yeah, we'll. we'll see, yeah, in a see-through blouse. That's amazing. I'm gonna look for that photo as soon as we get look off. Look for that photo. Yeah. That's so great. Um, well, Jill, listen, it's been such a pleasure. And just a reminder, everyone, if you're in New York, you can see Fuck the Seventh Grade. It is playing through Saturday, November 19th. You can get your tickets. It's at The Wild Project. It's a great show. It's entertaining, um, but it's also heartfelt. And I think you'll, you know, really- Yes, you'll laugh, you'll cry. Yeah. I love that. Well, Jill, it is so good to meet you. And uh, thanks for all you do. And like I said, fingers crossed that we'll see more of Fuck the Seventh. Uh, and Fox hopefully, the seventh I'll see you in, in Los Angeles. Hopefully, it'll. Yeah, yeah. I would love that. Yeah, um, all right. Well, great to see you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye.